Ah, another Netflix original animated movie. What can go wrong? Hey, what's up guys? It's me, Anthony, here to give you guys another movie review. This time it's for the new Netflix animated film, Fire Drake, The Silver Dragon. So if you've been following this channel for a while, at least in the last couple of years, you would know my history with Netflix animated original films. It hasn't been that good. Recently, I've been enjoying some of them, though they're not technically really Netflix original films. They're Sony films, Sony animated films that have been just uh, put onto Netflix. Cause you know, we're still in a pandemic world and people are not comfortable going back to the theaters, understandably. So movies like Mitchell's vs. the Machines and Wish Dragon have been put on Netflix and I guess those are Netflix original animated movies, but uh, those are the exception. But for the most part, Netflix animated original series have been trash. And Fire Drake the Silver Dragon is not quite a Pets United it's almost kind of like a dog gone trouble. Fire Drake is a young silver dragon who has had enough of constantly having to hide in a wooden village. He wants to show the older generation of dragons that he is a real dragon when humans are about to destroy his family's very last refuge. Fire Drake secretly sets off on an adventurous journey with a forest brownie named Swirl to look for a place where dragons can roam free. So like I said, this isn't the best animated movie that I've seen all year. It's not the best animated movie I've seen of all time, but it's not the worst either. And this movie is weird because at some of the times I think the animation is terrible. It's really bad, especially when they show the humans, how they're animated. It's really bad. But once you see the dragons and some of the animated creatures that they have in here, it's kind of impressive. It kind of reminds me of like Spyro the Dragon, the remake that they made. Just in some of the designs of the dragons, especially the older dragons, they totally look like Spyro dragons. And just some of the acts that the dragons are doing, it just reminds me of a game like that. And like I said, some of the animation on the dragons are really cool. The lighting effect, the shadows and all this stuff. And I was like, uh, this, this is actually pretty good. But then we switch to the human animation and some of the other animation that we have in here don't know what's happening. But it's really evident that this movie tries really, really hard to be like a how to train your dragon clone. Doesn't do it successfully, but man, they tried. I mean, this movie tries so hard to be like a DreamWorks film that they have a reference to Ice Age. A movie that this has nothing to do with, but they have a reference to Ice Age in here. Don't know why. Also, this movie has the typical tropes. I mean, they made a human who is like a thief and is like the worst of the worst of a human. But of course, he has like a dark past and he's misunderstood. And then you have the dragon who's a coward, but then eventually, you know, he finds the courage to do something. And then you have Swirl the Brownie, who is jealous of the relationship between the human and the dragon. You know, stuff we've all seen before. So if you're like an older audience watching this and you're just like, I've seen this kind of stuff before. And I always say this, I'm not the kind of person that whines and moans about stuff that, oh, we've seen this before, I've seen this before. It's a clone, it's a rip off of this. I'm okay with that stuff because if you just put your own spin on it, do it a little bit differently, or just even entertain me, I'm fine with seeing the same thing over and over again. Sadly, this movie doesn't really do anything that different with the material, the same material that we've seen in other films. So it just comes off as just lazy. Also, Sir Patrick Williams, you know, Picard from Star Trek, you know, uh, Professor X from X-Men is in this movie. Sir Patrick Stewart. Why is he in here? But I think that the biggest gripe I have with this film is that the story isn't consistent. They lay out the story that dragons and humans had a big fight, a big conflict, like thousands, hundreds of years ago. And then, you know, they have a rift and they separated themselves and they haven't seen each other or interacted with each other within these hundreds of thousands of years. But then they contradict that with one scene and it just, threw me off the whole time because I was just like, wait, I, I thought you guys set it up to be this way and now it's undone within two seconds. Overall guys, I think that Fire Drake the Silver Dragon is, it's harmless. You know, uh, kids, I could totally see young kids enjoying this, having fun, you know, you could distract them for a little bit while you just look on your phone to decide what you're gonna buy on Amazon next. But for me, you know, there's just too much stuff that are just, We've seen before that they didn't put their own original spin on and the characters are uninteresting. So for me, I pass. But let me know what you guys think of Fire Drake the Silver Dragon in the comments down below. Did you like it? Did you hate it? Were you forced to watch this because your kid wanted to or you just wanted to torture yourself like I did and 
put this on. Be sure to let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, do all that stuff. Also, guys, don't forget to check out my Twitter so you can stay up to date with my channel. And remember, guys, keep watching movies.